So I'm excited to share all of these recipes with you. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and start. Okay, so you guys, you're watching Chomp on This with me, Kim Lai, every Tuesday at 11.30. So today I'm going to share with you guys some delicious out of box recipes. We're going to make a Jim Beam apple bourbon whiskey cider drink. Ginger drink, you'll see. <laughs> and then we're going to make some apple bourbon um, rice and some apple bourbon mango salsa that we're going to put on top of a delicious fried tilapia filet. All right? So first thing, you guys, before I want to make the drink first because it's like, hello, dessert for dinner, right? But the rice is going to take a little bit of time. We'll want to go ahead and get that going. So the rice cooks while we're doing the rest of the show. So this is what we're using for the apple bourbon rice. Now I know this may sound really odd, but it was so good. Like I could, the flavors, I was like thinking about them in my head and then it's like, I gotta make it. I just got, it just, it sounds like, okay, it sounds like it could be good, but we have to really test this out. So my dad and I actually tested this out and if he liked it, it's approved. Okay, so what you're doing is taking Half a cup of, I've just got some jasmine rice. Half a cup of jasmine rice. I'm going to go give it a good rinse real quick. All right. Okay. So we have half a cup of jasmine rice. And then I am going to add some chicken broth. I always like to use chicken broth when I'm like steaming vegetables in place of water. When I'm steaming vegetables or cooking rice, because it just adds a, another element of flavor, a good flavor. <laughs> so I'm going to add a half a cup of <coughs> the chicken broth. Now don't forget, you guys, we're not using the whole carton, so make sure to put the date on the back of the carton and stick it in the fridge or put it in the freezer. Because if it stays in the fridge, it can last you another 14 days before you kind of want to throw it out. But in the freezer, it'll last you a little bit longer. Okay, so we have half a cup of rice, half a cup of chicken stock. I'm going to throw in some dried parsley. Now, you guys, the parsley didn't really, um, it really didn't add too much flavor, but it did add a lot of color, which I really liked. I'm going to add a little bit of Himalayan sea salt, and then I'm going to cut up some green apple, just a little bit, because I want a little bit, it's already going to be a little sweet from the, uh, from the apple bourbon, but again, it's apple bourbon made from green apples, so I want to kind of showcase the green apple a little bit. Oh, I should have done this before. I should, I should have showcased, uh, or I want to showcase a little bit of the green apple. So I'm just going to put in a few pieces of green apple. And of course, it's going to get soft once it's cooking with the rest of the rice and the rest of the ingredients. Okay. Do this, cutting up. All right, I just diced them up just like this. <laughs> and I'm going to dump them in. I'm not going to add any pepper. Oh my goodness, I added just even a little bit of pepper, and it's like, oh, it's fine until you get a bite with the pepper. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. The pepper is such a strong flavor. Too much for this. Just Way too much for this. Okay, so now, you guys, mm, oh, I gotta tell you later about this fresh fruit green tea that I made. Ooh, delicious. Okay, now, I'm gonna add, I better make sure, I don't wanna add too much and have it go icky. What did I do? A half a cup of chicken broth, a half a cup of rice, <gasps> parsley, a little bit of green apple for some, you know, an extra bit of sour, and two ounces of bourbon. Let's check this out. Two ounces. I have a very heavy hand, so everything needs to be measured. <laughs> two ounces. <laughs> See that? It's a little over two ounces. 
Okay, so what you're going for, you guys, with the rice is you want, what, however much rice you do use, whether it could be in any other, any recipe, you want to always put enough liquid that's about half inch above the rice. I don't think you know, if you will be able to see it like that. Okay, so now we're going to just set aside our rice. And you guys, this is a handy dandy little, um, it's a personal rice cooker. So a mini personal rice cooker. Usually they come in, they're large, like 10 cups. And this is a much smaller one, which is perfect for things like this and letting me do smaller meals. And all you do with the rice cooker is you're going to hit that little button, you guys, and it is done. Like, it will do all the work for you. Not done yet. But it'll do all the work for you. So now we're just going to let that sit aside. We're done. Oh, if you guys don't have a rice cooker, you can always put it in a pan. You just, like a saucepan, and put it on the stove. You just have to watch it a little more closely, you know, for the water. As the water evaporates, you don't want it to burn. That's why rice cookers are always handy, because you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about it burning. You don't have to worry over cooking. Nothing. Okay, now I'm going to do the apple bourbon drink. Okay, now you guys. So, Jim Bean has a recipe called ginger cider, and it's good. It is, it's, it's good. It does taste good. However, I wanted to just amp it up just a little bit, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, I'm calling, it's a ginger, I'm top, I'm going to, what do you call it with the rim? I'm going to rim the glass with ginger, a crushed ginger candy. You know how a lot of times you have a margarita, and it's that salted rim. This is a ginger candy brim, and then I'm gonna muddle up some mint, releasing some of that delicious summer smells and flavors, and I'm gonna add it to their already amazing recipe um, called the ginger cider, okay? Oh, and I'm adding a little bit more apple bourbon. Then, what did they have two parts, uh, three parts, uh, ginger, ginger ale, and one part, uh, apple bourbon, and I'm going to do two parts of the ginger ale and two parts of the bourbon. Okay, so this is how we're making this. I'm going to take, you guys have a food processor, you can do this uh, with a food processor, you could do it with a coffee grinder. I'm going to use my hand chopper. Now, I went and got, like you can get these at any Asian market, ginger candy, see? Yeah, don't ask me what it's, oh it is in English, it says ginger candy. Okay, but I don't know what the lines mean above. I'm sure it means ginger candy. <laughs> so these are delicious because it's not only ginger, there's a little bit of coconut added too. And I'm not a huge fan of ginger. It's, I don't know, it hurts my throat a little bit. But this little bit of coconut added in here makes these extra delicious. Okay, see these little ginger candies? Uh -huh. Now, all I'm going to do is, whoop, I'm going to put it in my food chopper, just like this. And on the top of the tray, I'm going for, uh, you know, like a powder, like a little granule. Check it. Ah. And you're making a big batch of my food processor. So I'm going to just do my like one or two. I'm totally full of this. Look. Look at that. Do you see that? Mm, yeah. Maybe? Look, it's just like, yeah, sugar salt granules. Okay, there it goes on my plate. Now, you guys, oh, let me get a little red. Okay, now, I'm so excited to make this. So, I'm gonna chop up a little bit. Oh, let me move my product. <laughs> product placement. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, I'm chopping up a little. <laughs> um, I want to line the rim of the glass with a uh, lime. You can use it with lime with lime. Mm. You could either do uh, lemon or lime. Just want to get it wet. So the sugar or whatever you're making that goes on the rim of the glass, it'll stick. Ah, look at 
You guys, it's candy ginger. It's so, uh, so I tried this last night. It's, it's really good. <laughs> okay, putting this aside. I now want to muddle up some mint. Now, you guys, mint is, is amazing. Um, it's very fragrant. However, if you muddle it, or you know sometimes you see people like they do this with the mint? Anytime you break this super delicate herb, it's releasing the oils and it's the, the flavor is stronger. So already, just by whacking it, giving it a good whack, releases some flavors. So I'm just gonna put like three leaves, just like this, in here. Now I'm gonna take a muddler and just break down the leaves even more. Now you'll see, they're gonna start to look a little mushy and a little wet. And that's because the oils, you're releasing all the oils with every muddle. It's like, ugh, ugh. All right. Mmm. Smells so good. Now I need a little bit of ice. Um, a lot of times, you guys go make these over um, a highball glass, or you'll use a highball glass. And a highball glass are, this is an eight ounce, this is an eight ounce glass. A lot of highball glasses, they're a little bit taller, and they're eight to 12 ounces. And highball glasses are used for, like, when you have a, a mixed drink cocktail that has, that you're using a lot of ice, or you're using a straw with, you'll see them served in a highball glass. Okay, whoop, filling it up with ice. Yeah, just like that. Now, okay, now we're gonna take two ounces. Where's my can opener? I'm gonna take two ounces of ginger ale. And then two ounces. I'm just gonna pour it in like this. Two ounces of ginger ale, ah, oh, fizz, fizz, fizz. And then two ounces of the apple bourbon. Where's my ounces? Oh, there we go. All right, two ounces of apple bourbon. Just like that. Oh, delish. Okay, now we're gonna top it off with some, I'm gonna squeeze some um, lime inside of the uh, apple bourbon, just like that. Now, you guys, top it off with um, top it off with a little bit, like a mint leaf, just like that. Look at how beautiful this drink looks, you guys. Uh huh. Now, you can either put like a little umbrella in it. I mean, if you want to get foo foo with it, I don't want to get foo foo with this drink. But you can put a little umbrella in it. Um, or you can put in a straw. These are highball straws. <laughs> and I wanted to serve it though in these cute little glasses. Perfect for summertime. Just give it a little mix. Mmm. Ugh. The, uh, the apple is not overpowering, which is amazing. I was wondering, like, when I received the, the Jim Bean. The, the shipment from them, I was like, oh, apple, woo, it's probably gonna be so sweet. It's such a light hint of apple that is so refreshing. Mm -hmm. All right, this is delicious, you guys. Okay, so there's our drink, dessert before dinner. So now we have a cocktail um, that we can munch on <laughs> while we're cooking. Okay, now. Muddler. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, I want to now, you guys, okay, so the rice is going, whoop, hot. The rice is going, and we have our cocktail. <laughs> mm. Oh, mint. We have a cocktail. I need to show you guys the fish, and then we're going to make the mango salsa. So let me go. I want to get this started. Now, you guys, fish doesn't take too long. Um, to cook it all, and I'm using today. I'm using tilapia fillets, just very thin, very good in color. <laughs> I'm trying. To, I'm like analyzing it as I'm trying. As I'm talking to you guys, I'm looking at it on the screen. It's very pretty. Look at this. So this is tilapia. Now, you guys, if you want to cook fish quickly, and that's obviously what I'm going for today. Um, 
you want to use a white fish. So you can use snapper, uh, cod, tilapia, which is what we're using today, um, swai fillets. I'm not going to add anything but salt and pepper to this particular, to the, what we're frying the fish today because I have a lot of flavors going on with the rice. And why do I keep touching that? I have a lot of flavors going on with the rice. And I'm going to have a lot of flavors going on with the mango, the apple bourbon mango salsa, okay? So, add some butter, add some oil, whatever you want to cook with. I'm going to use butter um, to your skillet, just like that. You want to get it going medium high. So, while these are cooking, we're going to chop up our veggies for the, um, the mango salsa. Once at the end, you guys, when we play all of this, it's all going to make sense because as I'm telling you guys all of this and I'm saying it out loud right now, it's like, oh, this is like crazy. All of these flavors, it's like crazy, but it's delicious put together. Um, so let's, let's keep on going. <laughs> I'm going to make myself crazy. Oh, all right. Look at all these amazing things, things, all of these yummy vegetables. Look. Look, look, you guys, we have cilantro, we've got parsley, tomatoes, red pepper, jalapenos, lime, mango, and of course, we're going to whip in that apple bourbon. It's going to give it that apple flavor. <laughs> so, got the pan going, butter's in the pan, and I'm just waiting for that to heat up. So let's go ahead and start chopping. All right, our fish, I'm going to set the fish Oh yeah, you guys can already see that. Put the fish there. Let's get moving. Okay, everything is going to be chopped into just, so we're just dicing everything, okay? And it's pretty simple. You, we're dicing everything and we're putting everything into one bowl and then we're just going to mix it all together. Salsa is not difficult to make, but you just want to make sure that you have the right ingredients in the salsa so that you're really, you're really getting the most of the flavors that you're trying to combine. No one, does that make sense? <laughs> okay. So let's go and do some green onion. I'm just using two stems, two stalks of green onion, and I'm using both parts. I'm using the white and the green. I'm chopping, oh yeah, you guys can see. Chopping up. See, now this is great because we're like really going to get down with our knife skills today. So just chopping up the green onion, I've got two of those. Ooh, our rice is boiling. All right. Now, I'm going to chop up. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to do the cilantro. I'm going to pull out the stems with the cilantro. Love herbs. All these yummy herbs and vegetables. And, uh, summer. It's summer. All right. We have some cilantro. It smells yummy. Now I'm going to do two tomatoes. On the vine tomatoes. Going to cut into little cubes. So it's, we're dicing. We're dicing. You guys, I love it when... It's like, it's so fun when people send you product and want you to create some recipes. Like, it's it's really, it lets you, like, so go out of the box with things. But it's so funny because you don't want to go so far out of the box that, like, it doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Um, it's funny. This morning I was looking at a friend of mine who's another food, well, he, his family owns a restaurant in Glendale. And he is also um, a foodie and... Um, Insta famous, so there's a lot of beautiful pictures on his Instagram profile, and he went to some food, some place where they were, um, they had come to take pictures of food, and one of the concoctions that they had was like these French fries that had some syrup thing on it, and then a whole bunch of sprinkles, and then like some fruity pebbles. I mean, it looked really bad, but it's like, ah. Uh, I mean, that obviously doesn't taste very good. And so that's what I mean. Like, you don't want to go so far out of the box to where it might make a pretty picture, but flavor-wise, it doesn't even make any sense, you know? And 
it, it, is that even really a pretty picture? Because you look at that, and it's like, my first thing was like, ooh, gross. So is it a pretty picture? I don't know. But you just don't want to go so far that you just push the envelope so much that it doesn't even make any sense. You know, pollution makes sense. It's like art. Well, I don't know if that's good, because not all art makes sense. But isn't that the point? But then that's not really relatable to food. Yeah, I'm taking everything back that I just said, like that half, last part of it. <laughs> I was going somewhere. I should just stop. When I actually get to the point, just stop. Whew. Okay. So we added some green onion. I got cilantro, and I have some fresh tomatoes. Oh, you guys, you can use um, Roman tomatoes as well. These are just on the vine tomatoes. Um, I got them from Melissa's Produce, but you can also use some uh, Roman tomatoes because they're, they're just more firm. You know what I mean? You want them to hold up. You don't want mushy tomatoes. Oh, my God. If I drink this, ooh, I have to burp. Huh? I'm going to be tipsy by the end of the show. Woo. Okay. So, jalapeno. We're going to add. There's going to be a little bit of a kick with this. I'm going to add half a jalapeno. This is Okay, our pan is heating up. See, I knew it was heating up because I could smell the butter burning. <laughs> okay, I'm only going to use half the jalapeno because I'm, I don't want it to get. Too, I don't want it to be so spicy that it's overpowering. Um, I'm really surprised, guys, that the apple bourbon is so good. Well, I, okay, I'm not surprised. That sounds terrible. I'm surprised that it's not. Overpowering. I thought it was going to be really heavy um, with the flavor of apple, but it's it's not. So I'm pleasantly surprised. All right, we have a jalapeno. I always leave the seeds on because you know I'm kind of like I'm crazy like that. I like to leave the seeds on. I like to be you know get outside of the box. I like to take risks. So we're leaving the seeds. <laughs> okay, so we got two more things to cut up. We've got our mango and our red pepper. But I'm going to go ahead and put the fish on. Okay, mango red pepper. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do, you guys, where is my salt? Where is my salt? All I'm putting on these, salt and pepper. So I'm going to go ahead and lay two of them in. Do you hear the sizzle? Do you hear the sizzle? I'm laying two fillets in. Three to four minutes. Each side, fish cooked super fast. I'm putting salt. I'm using Himalayan sea salt, and then I'm going to use a little bit of cracked bell, cracked bell pepper, fresh black pepper, like this. Okay. Oh, is there anything that smells better than butter? No, nothing. All right, is that a bell pepper? I'm only gonna use half of the bell pepper. I'm not using a whole bell pepper. So I'm just gonna cut the top off. Now remember, guys, look, boom, boom. Pop it out. And you still have red pepper. Ooh, look, I must put it up against the white. Look at how beautiful. Ooh, 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 pepper. But I'm gonna save that. All right, get rid of the membrane. Just loosen it up, just like this with your knife. Pull. The whole thing up. Easy. Okay, so I'm using half. Now, I'm going to cut this up as well into little cubes. So I'm dicing it. <laughs> I, um, I just want everything to be kind of consistent. So each bite will have a little bit of everything. So that's why I want everything to be kind of the same size. Plus, I mean, if you look at salsas, when you get salsas, whether it's from a jar or you're at a Mexican restaurant, all the ingredients are pretty much, you know, they're very consistent in size with each other. Okay. Wow, everything's just going together. Checking the fish. Ooh, be careful for splatters. Butter burns are the worst. The worst. Okay, look at how pretty and vibrant so far, you guys. Yay, mango salsa! Oh, let's go ahead. I'm going to use the juice. Of, I'm probably going to do two lines here. So I got the juice going. 
here. And then, of course, the other liquid we're going to add is the apple bourbon. So maybe, well, I think I might hold off. Let's just see how much liquid I have going on in here. Boom, boom. Now, the mango. So, take the top part off. Now, you guys, I have to take, I'm going to switch out knives. Um, I need a knife that's going to let me get as close as I can to the skin and the flesh. I don't want to take off too much of the meat, um, but I do need the skin to be gone. This, doing this with <laughs> a mango, um, now this is a skill my mom taught me when I was super little, and she used to make me practice. <laughs> oh my God, it's like a tiger mom. Um, I used to have to practice cutting a grapefruit. So I would take the grapefruit and go, shh, 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 and then peel, 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 and then she would make me go in and remove, you know, the thin layer of grapefruit? So all you have is the actual fruit. You don't have any, um, there's no skin whatsoever. You know, you buy the, you can buy like those, the jars full of grapefruit at Costco and there's no skin. It's just the flesh of the fruit. Okay. We would do that by hand. And so I got pretty good with the knife. And I don't know, maybe that has something to do with my fascination for having good knife skills. Because I had to do that at such a young age. And it wasn't even like she was making me do it because I was going to, I had no idea that I was going to be so into food, you know, so young. But it was just a discipline. It was just something to learn so that I would be able to do it for myself later. You know what I mean? Okay, now I usually use, oh, well, I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm gonna try to <laughs> cut around, I should just do it the way I'm used to doing it. Um, I'm gonna cut around the seed now. There's a seed in the middle. If you're not familiar with a mango, you just wanna cut around the seed. The seed is not edible at all, at all. So just get as much flesh as you can off of the seed. <laughs> just like this. Mango is my hands down most favorite fruit. I love it. I love it not so ripe. I like it when it's still actually a little green. Mm. Okay, I think these two fishy fishies are about done. Woo! Splatter, splatter. Now I did only I only um seasoned the one side just because just <laughs> you can season both sides if you want. Okay, now you guys when you cut up the mango, it's the same thing. You're going for consistency. Look at yeah. All right, so one whole mango. Mm. Oh. Consistency. So this is obviously a very bright, beautiful um, salsa. Orange and red and greens. It's perfect for summer. And you guys, we're making all of this in 30 minutes. Like legit, from scratch. So... These are like simple meals to make, sort of. <laughs> we are kind of going at lightning speed, lightning speed. Okay, there's that. Woo, done with that. This fish is done. Let me get a plate real quick, you guys, to put this fish on. Huh, look at that right here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this one off. And I got two more that I want to get fried up. Now, this fish is going to sit right on top of the apple bourbon <laughs> rice. Okay. Let's go ahead. Some more butter in there. Our pan is hot. Yay! Now, big time. Mm. I wish that you guys all had one of these too so we could like play a drinking game at 12.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> It's so refreshing. It's like, I don't know, it's just so cold and so crisp and 
the lime and the apple flavor, it's delicious. Okay, so I do want to add, let me see. Mm -hmm. Got the mango, the red bell pepper, green onion, cilantro, cilantro. Hey, where'd my cilantro go? What did I use my cilantro for? I lost it. What did I use? Oh no, the cilantro's in here. Oh, okay. Cilantro's in. Um, I think we are. Yeah, yeah, we're good to go. Okay, let me go ahead and put two more fish fillets in. Love, love, All right? Himalayan sea salt. Now remember, especially from the past videos, don't use too much sea salt because the Himalayan sea salt, the pink Himalayan sea salt, it's a little bit saltier than your like regular table salt, regular sea salt, <laughs> hot table salt. Hey, pepper. All right. Now we're going to let those two cook. Our rice. Oh, good. It's still. Ooh, you see how, oh, you could. You can see how the steam. See the steam coming out of the little hole? That's what I kept touching earlier. And I was like, ooh, ooh, hot, hot. Yeah. Okay. We have our lime juice in. Everything is in here. Everything is in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just going to mix this up. Oh. It's. Beautiful. Oh, it smells so good. You guys, the green onion, the jalapeno, the mango, everything. You can smell everything. Even the tomatoes. This is great. Super great. Another reason to make everything like little small pieces, like diced up, is because if you're eating this with like chips, or you're putting it on a tostada, I mean, you can't, the pieces need to be small so everything can fit, right? Okay, now I'm going to add the apple bourbon to the mango salsa. This is awesome. <laughs> okay, let me see, let me see, we're good, we're good. Jim Bean apple bourbon whiskey. Now, I want to start off with an ounce, <laughs> and we'll go from there. Now, remember, I don't want to overpower this mango salsa. I really, this needs to just add an element of flavor, enhance the flavor. In no way do I want it to overpower. Now, another thing is you're going to want to put this in the fridge. Because that's maybe, I don't know, an hour, two hours, you even make it the night before. That's going to really let all the flavors melt together. More so than if you were to eat it, boom, it just went click. That means the rice is done. How perfect. This timing is perfect. Okay. For the sake of plating, we are going to go ahead and put this on a plate so I can show you guys how pretty this is. And I just, I want to taste this. Let me just get on the bottom there. Oh my god. Oh god. Okay, super bourbon. But it's not overpowering. But that tells me I can taste the bourbon. One ounce is going to be good because when you guys stick this in the fridge, when you let it sit for an hour or two or longer, the bourbon, you're going to taste more of the bourbon. So maybe use a half ounce of the bourbon, but everything else comes through right now very nicely. Because see, even if you let this sit longer to, you know, to eat later, the jalapenos, those are also, it's going to get more spicy. Right now I don't taste too much of a spice, but the longer you let it sit, oh, you guys, it's just like, you know when you make spaghetti sauce and it always tastes better the next day? It's because the flavors have had time to like really blend and melt together and then release whatever they need to release. And it always tastes better the next day. This is really good right now. But it's going to have a different flavor tomorrow. Okay, woo! Flip it. Oh, someone was asking me yesterday too about alcohol and like cooking with alcohol. So, you know, you guys, most of the time, like when you are 
say you're doing a flambe, where, I mean, alcohol has to really be heated up for a period of time to lose all of its alcohol. I mean, even when you're using things like um, vanilla extracts, not the imitation ones, but the real ones, there's alcohol in them. So, like with the rice, okay, the alcohol in here is not evaporated, so I definitely wouldn't serve this to children. But we didn't cook anything, and so the alcohol, it's not going to break down. With the rice, I mean, we've steamed it for, what, um, 20 minutes? It's still going to have some alcohol in it because it didn't get to a temperature, even remotely high enough, to burn off all of the alcohol. So this, yes, it still does have an element. It, does, it still has a percentage of alcohol in it. This still has alcohol in it. All right? So just... Be aware of that when you guys are like cooking with alcohol. A lot of times people think, well, as long as I'm cooking with it or I'm heating it up in a soup, oh, I'm burning all the alcohol. No, you are not burning all of the alcohol. It still is alcohol lit. Alcohol lit. It still has alcohol. <laughs> it still has alcohol in it. All right, let's break this bad boy up. All right. <laughs> How was that? I was trying to explain that, and I think, yeah, they do a very good job at explaining that. Okay, I think these are about done. Yeah. Oh, these are going to be so nice and flaky and buttery. All right, so now we have our rice. Oh, wow. It smells so good. Oh, we've got that turned off. Let me go ahead and take these off. See these beautiful fish fillets? Again, white fish. Now, you guys, I just did all this in 30 minutes. If I can do this in 30 minutes, you all can do this in 30 minutes. Simple. All right, now, I want to fillet this up. So, this is what you're doing. We have a lot of elements here. So, we're taking the... We've got our rice. Oh, well, let me see. Do I have any pictures? I want to show you guys. Oh, I didn't take any pieces of the rice. Okay. I'm going to mix this up just a bit. Ooh. It's so pretty because the rice is a little off-white because it cooked in the chicken broth, but it has a little bit of green from the parsley, little pops of green, and then it also has a little bit of apple. Oh. Ooh, guys. Yeah, I was creating these recipes, and I was like, oh, this sounds so weird. Like, when you say it, it's apple bourbon rice. Like, what? But when you put them together, I just, I had to test that out. Well, obviously. But I was really surprised at how delicious. Okay. Can anybody see that? I want, I want to go up close. Oh, yay! Okay, so that's the rice. And then we're going to take one of the fillets of fish and oh, absolutely. I'm just going to set it right on the side so you have a little bit of the rice showing as well. And then we're going to take some of this apple burp <laughs> mango salsa and we're going to put it right on the other side. So it goes rice and then fish, and then the apple bourbon mango salsa, just like that. Um, I guess I want to use, you know, oh yeah, I use the cilantro. What am I saying? I want to use some parsley just for a garnish on the top. Just like this. Oh, Ooh. oh and you know what? Okay, let's add... Ooh, 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 let me just add a little, let me just do a little lime from the other side. Can you see, you know, a lot of times people want to squirt some lime onto the fish. Oh, you guys, that looks so amazing. Okay, look it. It's a Jim Beam, Jim Beam apple bourbon rice with a deliciously, perfectly cooked filet of tilapia and some Jim Beam apple bourbon mango salsa. Wow! Oh, and our Jim Beam, um, I don't even have a name for this, but 
um, I will put the recipe on the site, and then I'll come up with a name before, yeah, once I put the recipe up. Huh? Boom. Okay. Now, let me just taste it. Let me just taste this. You got to see how this, ugh. I want a little bit of the rice, a little bit of the fish, and I want a little bit of this salsa. Ready? Okay, you know what I love about it? You can still taste the fish. The fish comes through, the buttery fish. Do not put anything on that fish. Salt and pepper, that is it. Because everything else is flavored and seasoned so well that it really complements the plain white fish. And um, nothing is overpowering. This rice is damn good, you guys. <laughs> um, okay, so I want to thank you, thank you. So much to Jim Beam for um, sending this over so I can work with it for the NOM show. And you guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you are not already a subscriber because you get notifications each week um, when the shows are coming on. They do come on every Tuesday at 11.30. Make sure to follow me on all social media channels. And the, uh, the handle on everything is at Kim Lai And you guys, check out NOM. Go, there's so many amazing channels and people, um, food people, chefs, that are doing amazing recipes. So peruse through. Get some amazing recipes. Subscribe to other people. It's yummy. <laughs> okay, you guys. Thank you again so much. And uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. And we'll see you back here next week. Mwah. Ciao.